thank you, Brother Baxter. Thank you much. Good evening, friends. I'm happy to be out here again this evening to represent our Lord Jesus Christ and his great power to save and to heal to the uttermost. The brethren was just telling me that this microphone wasn't too good tonight. And can you hear me way back in the back, way up high? Can, if you can, raise your hand so I can hear this. No, way back. That's fine. That's fine. I'm a little tired tonight. I was up until about 2 o'clock this morning. I got something on my mind, and he uh, stood right up and prayed until noon. Sent his great power around and revealed it to me right before I went to the just turned the way just the way he said it would be. And how thankful we are for that. Now, I think tomorrow you can me to tell me I was to speak here to the auditorium. So I, I hope and trust that you'll be praying for me. And I'll pray constantly for you all. You just got one more day and then you will go many thousand miles away. But I trust that by God's grace that we shall return safely and be able to have someday the type of meeting here in New York that I would like to see. One that would just go on and on and on until people many times when they're in the service, I never am around. And, and Satan takes advantage of that. He will be in three or four days and it's sometimes more than that before the really the blessing begins to take place in the individual. Then when the Satan returns about that time, the unclean spirit that's gone out of the man, and then he tries to tempt the person again, and many times they'll get right in. And when they do, then it's over it says the news was going on, they could come back and they could see what was taking place. And this faith of a meeting really got to start around between tens of thousands healed, I, I believe. If we could just stay up long enough. I'll have faith. And I'll say this, that after I'm gone, uh, you will you will find out there's many people that's healed in the audience already that maybe they don't realize that it's a sign. But I, I know it is true. Now, I wish to read some of the scriptures, for my word is like any other man's, it will fail, but God will I just noticed my good friend, brother, Brother Raymond P. Ritchie, I guess he's already been introduced, and, and this year I certainly have a warm Christian love for Brother Ritchie. He was at the auditorium the night that the angel of the Lord's picture was taken. In the standing prison, in the time of the discussion, when this minister came out and tried to call me a divine healer, I told him, I was no divine healer. There's no man that's a divine healer. No one can heal at all but God. And doctors, they don't heal, they just assist nature. They don't claim to heal, they can store a place up, but they can't heal it. They might set a bone, but they can heal it. And it takes God, He's the healer. He said, I'm the Lord that heals all of your diseases. For all diseases has to be determined by God. Now, we're thankful for doctors and so forth who can give us medical aid and set bones, pull teeth, and, and, and so forth. But then we're all alright. That's doc doctors are God's servants to the people. And they help people. In the hospitals and institutions, we're very thankful to have them. And I have nothing against them. The only thing I do is pray that God will continue to help them. For anything that will help bless or do anything to help people, I'm sorry, I know God is with any movement that's trying to help people. That's what we're, we should do always, is try to do something to help somebody else. After all, that's the Christian attitude towards things. This is a great heavy burden that no one knows nothing about. That's just God and I alone. But when I do get to go to bed, what a wonderful privilege I have to kneel down before God and say, Father, I've done the best that I know how today. I've done all that I know how to make life just a little more pleasant for people. And I'm sure that his blessings he turns in return and makes life a little more pleasant for me. If you want to do something for God, do something for his people. If you want something good said about you, say something good about someone else. Bless someone else, and if you're blessing someone else, you're blessing God. For well, Jesus said, in so much as you have done unto the least of these, my own, you have done it unto me. So we know that that is the truth. So may the Lord Jesus bless us tonight. Now, as we read his word, 
And look for everyone now. We're here representing different denominations, Methodist, Baptist, Lutheran, Catholic. Different types of church. But that doesn't mean that much to God, that church you belong to. It's the condition of your heart. That's what God looks at. It's not the denomination church. We're all alive. We're just working agreements like between man and so forth. And I am not representing any church. Oh, I represent the church, the church that every one of you represents. Then that are bound with men are in the kingdom of God, the body of Christ. I've been in the Branham family for 40 years. They never asked me to join their family. I was bound in the Branham family. And that's how you come into the family of God. It's not by joining church. I have nothing against that. That's all right. You should do that. But you're bound in the church of God. That's your birth. And you become a child of God by being reborn again, regenerated, and become a new creature in Christ Jesus. Then you are a son or daughter of God, regardless of what denomination church you belong to. Now, in the book of 2 Kings, the 6th chapter, I just love to read this word. And I'm, Brother Baxter was making an apology for taking up much of the time. I said, do not do that, Brother Baxter, for I was just standing behind the curtain listening to his marvelous message. Brother Baxter is a very much of a speaker. And I am very happy to have him and our party to make up one of us. And Brother Bosworth here is uh, one of the greatest teachers on divine healing that I ever heard in my life. Brother Bosworth. He's old, and he's, he, he don't, he won't, he'll resent that. I was standing down at the Beltmore Hotel in Miami one night. He was just this gallant and standing strong and straight. And I looked at him. I admired him. I know that the battles that he had fought down through life's time, and I'm just following the path that he cur carved out in the wilderness. And I said, Brother Bosworth, you're 73 years old now. When were you your best? Threw his shoulders back like Caleb of old and said, right now. But I am right now. He said, Brother Branham, you misunderstand me. He said, I'm just a child in an old house. So that's the way he feels about it. And God has kept him that way. Wonderful. Oh, if, I, if Jesus tarries and I can stay that long, let me be like that. That's right. Brother Richie here. How I could speak of him, of how down through the age when I was a little boy in school, he was out there preaching the gospel and praying for the sick when I was just a boy. Your mothers and dads listened to him preach the gospel on divine healing. Both of them out of Zion, Illinois. Candidates are out from under the great teacher, late Dr. Dowie. How Dr. Dowie in his death prophesied that I would come to that city 40 years from the time that he died. Not knowing nothing about it, he died on one day and I was born on the next in 40 years to the day I entered the city, not knowing nothing about it. Oh, how God's great move is coming together. I hear the sound of abundance of rain. Now, in the sixth chapter, in the eighth verse, listen closely. God never promised to bless my word, but he promised to bless his word. And now listen closely now as we're duplicating the day. When this great man, Elisha, who had a double portion of the spirit of Elijah, there never was in the age any two major prophets on the earth at one time. There were many minor prophets, but there were one major prophet. And Elijah was the prophet until Elisha came. Then when Elijah was taking off, a portion, a double portion of Elijah's spirit, Elijah's spirit came up on Elisha. See, always remember this. God takes his man off the earth, but never takes his spirit. His spirit comes right back down this way. It come up on Elijah, went off of Elijah onto Elisha, off of Elisha and come on John the Baptist. Off of John the Baptist is predicted to come again in the last days the same Spirit. It's God's Spirit. The Holy Spirit is up on the church at Pentecost, come right down through the age and right on down through the age of the Lutheran, Baptist, Methodist, and on down through, on into this age here. It's still the same Holy Spirit. When people's faith get up into a place to get the blessing, to realize it's there, 
then the same operation of the Holy Spirit will be operating in the church like it did back there. Just the same. Now listen to this closely. And the king of Syria warred against Israel and took counsel with his servants, saying, In such and such a place shall be my camp. And the man of God sent unto the king of Israel, saying, Beware that thou pass not this place, for thither the Syrians are come down. And the king of Israel sent to the place which the man of God told him and warned him of, and saved himself there not once nor thrice. Therefore the heart of the king of Syria was sore troubled for this thing. And he called his servants and said unto them, Will you not show me which of us is for the king of Israel? And one of his servants said, None, my lord, O king, but Elijah the prophet that is in Israel telleth the king of Israel the words that thou speakest in thy bedchamber. Let's bow our heads. Heavenly Father, we thank thee tonight to know that the great Spirit of God, which is up on the prophet Elisha, is on earth today, still moving on down through the sons of God. The great Holy Spirit that was given at Pentecost this year tonight. And thy children, many are weary and warm, been pushed about all for their own good, their teaching, their child training, to bring them up in the admiration of the Lord, trials worth more than silver and gold. But as it is written, no chastisement is pleasant for the time being. But finally, when thy church becomes to have its training, then they will become adopted sons or placed sons into the inheritance of God, which shall inherit all things and be equal in the powers and blessings as the Son of God. Brothers to him, we think that how he was born in this world, the Son of God, but at the age of 30, God placed him upon the banks of Jordan that day where he was standing and the water dripping from his locks. God vindicated that as his son and said, This is my beloved son, in whom I am well pleased. Adoption, placing, placing into his kingdom for the work that he was to finish. Now we're thankful tonight that he finished the course. Then despised the shame, but bore it, was nailed to Calvary as substitute for us, dying in capital punishment, born in a stable, went out in capital punishment. The King of glory come down in tabernacle among man from the ivory palaces to be take upon himself not the form of angels, but as the servant of man, clothed in humility, wandered about, no place to lay his head, slept wherever he could, scorned by the ones that he loved, and was made finally a bleeding sacrifice. But he pleased the Father in so much he said, This is my beloved Son, hear ye him. And suffered under Pontius Pilate, crucified, died, buried, rose the third day, sitting at the right hand of God the Father, making intercessions now for we who've accepted the Holy Spirit, the third person of the Trinity. And in our hearts tonight, he rules and reigns. And he has said, whatsoever things you desire, when you pray, believe you receive them, and you shall have them. We believe it. And now, Lord, the great dark hours has come at the end time. Help us now tonight in this service that God's great Spirit might come down visible among man. Every person in here might know that he's standing near them. 
Oh, God, take the clay, the voice of mortal beings and speak, Lord, the articles of God. That people might see and fear God and serve Him. May all the sick and the afflicted here tonight be healed, every one. May there not be a feeble one left. Grant, Lord, that this will be a night that will be a memorial night. Those who will remember this St. Nicholas Arena will always remember tonight. Bless us now together, for we ask that in the name of thy beloved child, Jesus. Amen. I'm by all this it is to look at this scripture just a moment because the time is up about 12, 15 minutes. I want to finish telling you of the vision that was last night, the little boy being raised from the dead in Finland. How many of you heard that rumor in the Bible before it come to pass? You heard me speak of it in the auditorium, raise your hand. I asked last night about the little boy being raised from the dead in Finland. Let's see your hands go up, the ones all over the everywhere. Look at it. See, that was long before it took place. Always speak that way, and it, you can just write it down that it's perfect. Or it's not man that's speaking, it's God. This is God's voice to the people. Every word of God is a seed and will produce just exactly like it's spoke in the Bible, if it be received in good ground. Now that's God's voice to his church. Now to an individual, sometimes he uses the human voice which is secondarily. It has to compare with this of the written word. Now, in doing this, God has blessed us. And how that Elijah the prophet, and when the king of Syria declared war on Israel, and there was a dignity between them, why, Elijah the prophet sat in his home, and he seen what the enemy was going to do. So he went to the king of Israel and told the king of Israel were that the king of Syria would be uh, laying an ambush to, be, to come out on them and ambush them when they came by. And the king of Israel sent down there and found it just the way that Elijah the prophet had told him. God help us as American people to when we can get back to God again, that God was able to help the nation of Israel through the divine realm is, can help America tonight through the divine realm out of all this. And that's our only hope that we have is in God. Our hope tonight is not in the atomic bomb. Our hope tonight is in Jesus Christ. Christ is the answer. And in a chaplain in Tokyo, out of Tokyo, in Japan, rather, when the war was going on, chaplain friend was standing there, he raised up his hands and said, God, in a consecration camp, but I guess I'll come home to meet you from this place. So I'd like to visit my wife and babies once more. But nevertheless, Lord, if you want me to go home from here, I'm ready to go. Watched the little sentry walk in his post. He walked close to him, seemed like the sentry wanted to speak. He looked right and left, seen him what? said, you Christian? Chaplain said, yes, and me Christian too. There's the answer. Not the big four, not the UN, but the Christ-given way. Up in Finland, you'd see the Russians and the Finns put their arms around each other, hug one another, kiss one another with tears rolling down their cheeks. Brothers. They had nothing against each other. The God of this age, the God of the hearts of leaders, all the kingdoms of the world belongs to Satan at this time. You don't want to believe that, but it's the scripture. Satan took Jesus up and showed him all the kings of the world and said, these are mine. I can do with them whatever I want to. Jesus knew that, but he knew he'd fall heir to them. So if you bow down and worship me, I'll give them to you. Jesus said, it's written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. And over in Revelation it's written, Rejoice ye heavens, ye holy prophets, for the kingdoms of this world have become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ, and he'll rule and reign forever. There'll be no more war than leaders, selfishness everywhere. 
But in the midst of all of this, the church of God's being pulled out by the Holy Spirit. Elijah seen where that king was going to do that. So he sent the king of Israel and said, Now don't go down that way. That because they're laying down there waiting. And watch that same prophet, after getting down to Dolphin, did not see the the angel of the Lord never showed him about Syrians coming out and covering the city over, for God had another way for that. God don't show his servants all things, but he shows his servants just the word of knowledge as much as they have need to know. So you see it lays in God's power, not in the power of man. Though man be blessed, but yet God is the father and the ruler over all. Balaam of old said, no prophet can say only what God puts in his mouth. How can he speak unless God speaks? And that was true. Now, we read of the prophets of old, we read of the powers of God and how it operated the church. And tonight, a friend here that's lukewarm and not up to where you should be in Christ, the great glorious powers of God is ruling and reigning in his church again. Don't you be one that's behind. Do not try to be popular with the world and right with God because you can't be. You must be right with God and then you're not popular with the world. In this day that we're living, seek God with all your heart. Call upon Him while it's time to call. While you have a chance of repentance. And while the mercy of God is reached down to you. For the hour is coming when it will do no good to call. It will be too late then. Call now. If you would have lived in the days gone by when they crucified Jesus, you would say today, I would have stood for him. I would have given my life for him. You have a more of an opportunity to do that now than you would have in them days. Stand now. The opposition is greater today than it was then. Last evening I was speaking at the little Glad Tidings Tabernacle where we had our service because the hall was used last evening here. I was telling of how the Lord had raised a little boy from the dead in Finland, which was seen two years in the vision before it come to pass. Now what was it did that? Not your brother, but the Spirit of God. The same Spirit that was upon Elijah, upon the, the man gone by, it's the same Spirit in the world today. Moving. It sees, foretells, you notice it. I pray that it'll be in the meeting tonight to do the same thing. It was up on our master, Jesus Christ. When a man came to him and was going to doubt him, Jesus said, when he seen Nathaniel coming, he said, Well, behold, an Israelite in whom there is no guile. In other words, a Christian, a believer. He said, When did you know me? He said, Before Philip called you when you were under the tree, I saw you. Now, Philip didn't try to refer it to mind reading or, or mental telepathy. He just said, Thou art the Son of God, the King of Israel. Today his name's immortal among man for his decision. Your name shall become immortal when you make your decision for Jesus Christ as the Son of God, the King of Israel. Then when he told the woman at the well about her sins, he talked to her a little while and said, Go get your husband. That was it. That was her... What was hindering her? He was questioned one time why about healing when he seen one man that had some kind of a disease and left a great multitude, St. John 5. They questioned him. He said, Verily I say unto you, the Son can do nothing in himself, but what he sees the Father doing, that doeth the Son likewise. St. John 5, 19. For the Father loveth the Son, and he showeth him all things that himself do, and he will show greater things than this that ye may marvel. 20th verse. Now, the Scripture says that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He did not claim to be a healer. He said, It's not me that doeth the works. It's my Father that dwelleth in me. He doeth the works. He did not claim to be a great person. But what he did claim to be, he was, and God vindicated him that he was what he claimed to be. And God will vindicate every man that will speak the truth. God will prove it to be so. 
Man can say anything. That doesn't make it so. But when God speaks, that makes it so. And he said he did just as the Father showed him. And the scripture says Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today, and forever. Three Hebrews 13, 8. Then Jesus Christ, if he's the same today as he was yesterday, he still does the same works today that he did yesterday. If he doesn't, he isn't Jesus Christ. And his claims is not so. And how does he do these works? In a visible body? No. For it's written, a little while and the world seeth me no more. Yet you'll see me, for I'll be with you, even in you, to the end of the world. The things that I do shall you also. And greater in this shall you do, or more, for I go to my Father. And nightly he does more in the meeting. In one single meeting he does more of telling the people what to do and so forth in one single meeting and it's written of him telling the people in the New Testament. Think of that. Three years of ministry. Of course, the many things he did do is not recorded according to Luke. But the things that's written. He told a man one time where the fish had a coin in his mouth. He told him where some mules was hitched at two places where they'd come together. He knew where a man would be packing a pitcher, make ready an upper room. Just about six, seven things is all he it's recorded of him saying. But he knew their thoughts. He read their mind. Did you know Jesus read people's mind? He perceived their thoughts. Is that right? Then he knew what they were thinking about. He knows tonight what you're thinking about. And he's here now and knows what you're thinking about and can reveal through his channels what you're thinking about. Of course, we know the devil has patterns and types of everything that God has. Everything that Satan has is secondarily that he t- patterned off of God. Every bogus thing has, a, has something or- original to be made off of. If there was no real dollar, the bogus dollar would be the original and the first. And as long as there is a bogus, only proves that there is a real one somewhere. Amen. A real one. So when you see something the devil is doing, remember God's got something far beyond that that he's trying to impersonate here. But Jesus said, by their fruits you shall know them. All right. Now his spirit is here. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. He's moving in his church. Church, you know what's the matter with it? Here's what it is. You're not yielding to the Holy Spirit. You receive the Holy Spirit and think, well, that's as much as I go. Well, then you're just ready to go to work for God, Dan. When you in, receive the Holy Spirit by believing on Jesus Christ and receiving the Holy Spirit, then you're just a candidate to go to work for God. Then go to yielding your members to him. See what he'd have you to do. He might have you to preach, sing, testify, pass out tracts, talk to people, bring someone to church. All kinds of gifts and helps that's in the body of Christ. Some are called for one thing, some another. But no matter what you've got, how little it is, you say, well, Brother Branham, the only thing I can do, I might talk to some people. Well, that might not be very much to you, but put it in the hands of Jesus and see what he'll do with it. Like the little fishes that was in the little boy's hand. He could only feed him. But when he put it in Jesus' hand, it fed 5,000. So it will be with you. Put what you have in his hand. In Finland that night, when the little boy had been raised from the dead, as I told you last night, the little girl, the other little boy was struck and hit over the other side. His head had a concussion. They called us from the hospital. The little boy was dying. That poor little Finnish mother, I never felt so sorry for her. There was thousands and thousands you couldn't get near the auditorium for it. Two or three city blocks, they were just blocked in solid everywhere. In Kofio, Finland, that's near the Lapland. And oh, what a marvelous, glorious time we were having in Christ. And when I went in one night, they had dragged me across the little mother. And the next day, Mrs. Isaacson said, Brother Brands, that poor little father and mother, the second day, said they're setting out here. 
and said it's, it's pathetic to, to see them. Said they're crying. They want you to go down there. I said, Sister Isaacson, I could do nothing. God would have to show me first. I said, I'm praying for the child. I said, will you just come out and speak to him? So they brought him in the hall. Poor little mother. She ran up and said, oh, go heal my baby. Of course, through the interpreter. She did not speak English. I said, Sister, I couldn't heal your baby. I said, well, they raised the other little baby after he had been dead. I said, you can heal my little baby. He's dying. I said, no, ma'am. When I was over my homeland in America two years ago, God showed the vision and told just where the little boy would be laying and how it would look, how the little fellow would be. Many of you read it in the voice of healing, didn't you? I told you it would be in the voice of healing, and it, it is. And then the poor little thing I felt so sorry for her. And she said, I said, that was a vision. And she said, well, go see vision for my little boy. Well, that was mighty sweet, but you can't see visions when you want to. Not at your leisure. It's God's divine order. Not what I will, but what he will. Now, then, here's what's taking place. I said, are you Christian? No. I said, look. Your little boy may be dying, as the doctor said, and he'll go up to heaven because he's a baby, about six, seven years old. I said, he, he doesn't know what sin is yet. I said, he'll go up to heaven. And if you die in your sins, you can never be with him no more. And if you get saved and the little boy dies and it goes up to heaven, then if you, when you die, you'll go up to heaven. You'll be with him always where there's no accident. And I said, and perhaps then, if you want a favor from me, you'd do something for me, something kind. If you want a favor with God, then do something kind. And so she seemed they couldn't lose on that, so they knelt down and began to cry and pray and gave their hearts to Christ. It raised up, then the poor little thing said, now go in and see vision from my little boy. I said, I'll go pray. She said, come go to the hospital. I said, no, he can show me in my room just the same as he can show me there. I said, he may not show me at all. So Mrs. Isaacson finally got him to leave. And every few minutes they called back up and said, Brother Branham seen vision yet? <laughs> and they were interested in their little boy because the doctor said it had not come to and this is the third day. We just come from the auditorium that night. And, oh, I was standing at the window. I had this same Bible over my heart. I went up to the window. It doesn't get dark there at that time of year. There come the Finnish soldiers and the... And the uh, civilians walking through, just uh, talking to one another, you know, probably the meeting because it's all turned from the auditorium. The whole country in there was just working alive with people. And I put my Bible down on a table, and coming up, my brother Howard, many of you remember, he is with us last time here. Now, if there's any Canadian people here, I don't mean to say this to any slam to your country. See? When we was in Canada, we got a hold some candy, and oh my, they just haven't got the stuff to put in it that the American people have. Now, that's and it was kind of flat tasting. He said, you talk about Canada's candy being flat, taste this. And he gave me two little pieces of candy, and I just laid it down on the table and walked over there. And I raised up my hands like that, and I said, oh, great Jehovah, how marvelous you are. Wonderful. It just healed that little war orphan that night. She had been in a cripple, and her one leg was about six inches shorter than the other, as I told you last time. You seen her picture in the voice of healing and how she couldn't move with them. A little war orphan. And I was thanking God for her healing. And standing there, I felt something strange. And I looked standing here by my side, and there he stood. He had a vase in his hand. I would call it a vase. I don't know too much. It's kind of a long, tall affair. And in there was two American, what I call, Easter flowers, daffodils, yellow-looking. Uh, we call them Easter flowers in Indiana and Kentucky. I may have a different name here, but... They're kind of a yellow-looking flower comes up around Easter. And they were sitting in this little container that he had, a little thing, and he set it down here on the table. And one of these little Easter flowers that were leaning to the north was laying all the way down, and the other one was wilting, going down. And he looked at me. He's a big man, about 200 pounds, got dark hair to his shoulders, kind of an olive complexion, always carries his arms folded, comes from the right, always coming to me. And he's come since he was a little bitty baby. I was just a few minutes old when he made his first appearance in the little log cabin in Kentucky. And he was standing there. He set those, this little thing down and was looking at me. And um, I looked at that and he said, what did your brother give you? 
And I said, serve two pieces of candy. He said, eat them. And I picked up one of the pieces of candy, started to eat them. Tastes pretty good. And I swallowed it. And when I did, the Easter flower that was leaning to the north, just exactly geographically, positionally, the way that first boy fell to the north when the car hit him, and the other went to the south, caught him under the chin and hit him against the tree, and the other boy run right over and mismatched him under the car, the one that died. And the one that was living back in school then, and this little boy was still in the hospital. We hadn't got to him. And so that one laying down that way is when I eat that first piece, it went raised right straight up. He said, eat the second piece. And I picked up the piece, and oh, what a terrible taste. I spit it out like that, and that flower began to go, tch, 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 going right down. It said, fail, and the boy will die. I put it back in my mouth and chewed real fast and swallowed it, and when I did, it went, stood right up with the other one. And he looked at me, that ring of light that you see in the picture came down over where he was. He went up into the light and went out. Brother Baxter and my brother Howard had went to their room. Brother Lindsay and Brother Moore had went to their room. Sister Isaac into her room, and I went to my room. And I run out and call, and I said, Remember, it's thus saith the Lord. That baby's going to live. That baby that's dying in the hospital. I said, Call her and tell her. So them phones that they have there, it's a little bit of a fair that you kind of put in your ear and turn a little crank. And she called the home Miss Isaacs and did, and the people had been called the hospital. The baby was sinking and dying. They had a babysitter with their other baby. They went to see the last of the baby. And while they, while they rang the hospital, and the doctor came and brought the lady to the telephone and said, that the angel of the Lord has just appeared in the room and saying, your baby's going to live. Said, how will I know it? It's sitting up in there now to itself in its right condition, ready to be washed and go home. The baby today lives in Finland perfectly, normally, and well because Jesus Christ, the Son of God, had respect to the prayer of a mother. See? Not me. It was the mother's prayer. Her promise to God that she'd serve him and the Father. Just a moment, and we're going to start the prayer line. Last evening when we got home, we had a very sad message. My wife sitting here in front of me with the baby. We've got a little fellow at home, about six months old, and you don't know what a hard thing it is to leave that little fella. She had a little old naughty head she laid over on me this way. The other day, and I just felt like in my whole innermost being of my heart would pull from me. I love her with all my heart. We got a letter last night from some from the secretary that the baby's sick. Of course, the mother, you know how she felt. She just went into a frantic almost. And, and the baby's staying with the grandmother, which lives quite a distance from the phone. I said, well, it's near midnight. Don't call tonight. Call in the morning. We lay there just a few moments. I couldn't go to sleep. I said, or my wife, her breath become coming slowly then, normally. So I slipped up, went in the other room and knelt down. I began to pray. Along about 3 o'clock this morning, I looked in the room and I seen someone coming to me packing my baby. It was choking. The little face was red as the eyes were set. It was choking. He couldn't catch his breath and everybody was excited. They handed, they handed over to me and I placed it in my arms and I said, Oh God, don't let my baby die. Spare its life, will you, Lord? About that time I heard him catch his breath, looked over at me and was all right then. I handed it back, and the angel of the Lord spoke in the room, said, In the morning you will receive the news that the baby has been sick. It's all right now. I waited just a little bit, went off to sleep, woke up this morning about 9 o'clock. The wife came in the room, and she said, I'm going, to call the, I'm going to call now and see about the baby. I said, Honey, you won't have to call. But here's going to be the message you're going to receive. When this lady goes over to find out about the lady's going to say is the baby has been awfully sick, but it's all right now. God healed it last night. And so she called up my little boy, Billy Paul, and all of them gathered around the phone. I said, watch these words, word by word. So she called and got the lady and said, go over across the field and ask the grandmother about the baby. She said, the baby's been awfully sick, but it's all right this morning. <laughs> Just word by word. Oh, 
friend, it would take hours to reveal. I couldn't do it. It's unlimited, the things that he does. What is it? It shows that Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever, the one that was back there with Elijah, the one was up on the Son of God, Jesus Christ, the one that's in the church tonight. The Holy Spirit knows the secret of every heart and knows just what will be. Do you believe that? Let's bow our heads. Heavenly Father, bless the night in a marvelous way. Thou knowest all things, Lord. Knows that I am not speaking of myself, but I'm speaking of thy Spirit, which is here now. Oh, may the angel of God come with such anointing tonight. These people are here to be prayed for, Lord. Many of them, hundreds of them. And may they with one accord see the glory of God. And if it be possible, if it's thy divine will tonight, Father, may he appear right here on a platform visible. That every eye in here might witness to see his great form. For I know that he stands near now. God, help the unbelievers tonight to know that thou art near and thy servant has spoke the truth. Lord, if I speak the truth, then you'll speak of it yourself, for thou art the truth. You are the truth, the way, the life. And I've spoke of you, Father, and therefore I know it is the truth. And not a worry, but what you will have vindicated to be the truth tonight before these thy people. And may this be a great glorious meeting, and may tomorrow afternoon, Lord, may literally hundreds of souls find you. Tomorrow night, give us a closing climax, Lord, what we prayed for through the end of Bless us now together, for we ask that in the name of thy Son, Jesus, amen. Awfully late. This is Saturday. Surely you'll be able to rest a little tomorrow. Everyone, just as reverent as you can be now. Don't disturb. I'm so happy to see these brethren here. Just a whole line of these recorders. And what a work they're doing for the Lord. These recordings are being sent around the nation. And they're going into homes and into halls and so forth. They even got us in a movie picture the other day to introduce these things. And hundreds of people are being saved and healed right through these recordings. Aren't you happy that man's got the message on their heart? Maybe they're not preachers, but they're trying to get the message to the people. Doctors, they tell me, and men of, of great standing in the world are out trying to win souls for Christ. God can use these things in a secondary way like this. May the Lord Jesus bless everyone that hears the message. May they be saved and healed. Now, please, dear friends, in the name of the Lord, be just as reverent and set quiet as you can for the next few moments, if you will. I'll try to be as hasty as I can. And then I want to ask you one thing just before we get the prayer line lined up. I want to ask you something. Now, look. Every person in here, as far as I know, but my wife and Mr. and Mrs. Roberson, Mr. and Mrs. Upshaw and Miss Brown, that's the only people that I know in this entire building that I can see or know anywhere. Unless it's Brother Bosworth back here and Brother Richie and the brother here, Brother Baxter, my son. Now you're sick and troubled. And could you imagine, how would you want to take my place standing here now and know that you're some between five and 6,000 people perhaps sitting here in every aisle on you and in there, you can feel the cold waves of skeptic and everything moving in now. Satan, restless, demon powers are moving in. You ought to know how you feel. This cold wave after wave, then here comes faith moving in, here comes a cold wave. Moving in, waves, channels, just like this radio or whatever, television. Television is waves. It materializes as the waves are brought in on a certain kind of a crystal or whatever it is. And so does the power of Almighty God materialize. Vision materializes in front of you just like radio, just like television. 
if God has called you to do so. You believe that? It does. It's proof. I'm going to ask you to be just as quiet as you can and don't stare around because you're certainly an interference. And all the Christians, silently in your heart, pray for me, will you? And then I am here representing the God that you love. And some glorious day, you and I, every person in here, will stand before God to give an account for our lives and what we've done with Jesus Christ. I want to stand that day and say, with all my heart, dear God, when I was in New York, I tried to represent you in every way that I could. And I'm thankful that you come down and prove that what I was talking about was the truth. Then it'll be up to you what you do with it. I'll be free then, as Paul of old said, I'm free of all man's blood. And I'll be free when that time comes, if I testify the truth and God proves that it's the truth. And when someone on the platform being healed, let every person out there suffering, let them believe right at that time. Believe for yourself, and God will heal you. Accept it and believe it. All right. Where's Bill? What's the word you All right, that's the start. You take it. Where's Jane Do you love him? All your heart? Kind of get this as quiet as we can before him so we can be where we're standing. Have you got the full 15 billion? You got about 20 in there. <clears throat> All right. Everyone just as reverent as you can be now. All right. Bring your patient. Everyone just as quiet and reverent as you can be now. How many up this way believe now? How many up this way believe? And down in this way, on both sides. Oh, isn't that wonderful, Brother Baxter? Brother Lindsay, look at there. Yeah, or Brother Bosworth, Brother Richie. We're, something has to happen, Brandon. Something just has to happen. God knows this, that the angel of the Lord who met me said, if you get the people to believe you and be sincere when you pray, there will be nothing stand before your prayer. There will be nothing. Just think of that. No matter what disease you have, it won't stand before prayer if you will believe. Now, what must you believe? Believe in God. First, believe in the Son of God, Jesus Christ. Believe in the Holy Spirit. Believe in angels. And then you've got to believe me that I'm telling you the truth. Do you believe that? Now, that's wonderful. I'm doing that for a purpose, friend. See, the enemy stands here to fight at me, you see. And all oh, that bunch of New York people, they don't believe. But the Holy Spirit here is saying they're wrong. It's wrong. They do believe. And that gives me the initiative side to walk out, you see. All right. Here's the lady standing here. You're the patient, aren't you, lady? Right. Now, this lady wants to get well. I don't know one thing about the lady. I've never, God knows I've never seen her in my life knowingly. She's a total stranger to me. I know nothing of her. If there's anything in the world that I know, God will have to reveal it to me. I don't know. I couldn't do one thing about her healing because she's already been healed. 1,900 years ago, Jesus Christ put in Calvary what she needs to be healed by. Now, the only thing she has to do is accept it. And according to her faith, it'll be to her. If she believes spontaneously right now, great faith over her head, she'll go right on and be healed here. If she believes that much, it'll take her a few weeks to get well. If she's down to a mustard seed, if she'll just have that kind of faith, hold on to it, it'll bring you right out to the light. Just stay with it. Believe it. Testify of it. Confess it. And God will bring it to pass. Now, everyone, Reverend, and everyone out here now without prayer cards, raise your hand. It wants to be prayed for. Everybody without prayer cards hasn't got prayer cards. Raise your hand. All right. That's the way be reverent. Now, if you look this away anywhere in the building and believe that that is the truth, and if you're sick, accept Jesus as your healer and say, Lord God, to confirm my faith, to confirm my faith, let Brother Branham call me back. Let Brother Branham call me out here and tell me that I've been healed. Will you do that? 
And if you just not, just not, just kind of haphazardly go into it, but really with all your heart believe it, God will pull my attention from this platform and show me what's taking place out there, and he'll call you what you are, who you are, what your name is, and all about it. You believe that? All right, now be in prayer now. Everybody reverend. Father, help us now. Here stands a woman standing here by my side. I know her not. You know her, Lord. You know what she is. You've fed her ever since she's been on earth. Every breath that she's drawn has been by your divine grace. Every bit of food she's ever eaten is by your divine grace. And I pray thee, Lord, that as she's standing here sick and afflicted, that you will let the spirit that was upon your son, Christ Jesus, come down upon this poor, unworthy vessel. Unworthy is right, Lord. But if you were looking for holy hands tonight, where would you find them? We've all sinned and come short of the glory. But oh, how we're encouraged to read in the scripture that Elijah was a man subject to like passions as we are. It wasn't his, his morals. It was what you'd called him to be and what he'd done with the gift that you'd given him. Now help, dear God, that your power that would reveal to the woman her sins at the well, tell Philip of where he was at, their needs and causes, may he come tonight. If I've testified of you, now, Father, testify that I've told the truth. And these people will believe you and be healed, for we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Put it back there. Don't want you too far away now. Now, can you hear all right back at the back? When sometimes the anointing gets real heavy, I, they say I don't speak loud enough. You'll watch that with your brethren somewhere. <clears throat> now, lady. You and I be strangers. I do not know you. I'm wholly, fully depending on Jesus Christ. And here you are, and here's several thousand people sitting here tonight, and they are looking. Many of them have raised their hands as Christians, and they believe and believe that I've told the truth. Now I see what a position that puts me in. And here you come up out of the audience there, a perfect stranger, received a prayer card with a number on it, and here you come up. That be your number was called, and you're the first one for the night. My, how wonderful. Now, if I'm able to know anything, I see you're breathing awful fast. I want you just to be not excited, just be reverent. Have faith in God. Are you aware of something strange? Now, that's the angel of the law. Audience, I wish you could just everyone be close enough now to feel what this is moving down. It's settling. It's coming right in from my right-hand side now. The angel of God who I'll have to stand before that day of the judgment. Moving up on me. The lady's becoming very conscious of it now. I see a vision moving out. She's moving away from me now. Oh, what a life. Look to me, sister. You're trying to believe, aren't you? Suffering with asthma for one thing. You've had that for some time, too. See, I see you under an operation or something. That's been some time also. See, a dark-complected doctor seems to be standing here, someone waiting for you in a hall with a gray suit on. I see a man coming near you. Yes, you've got a, you're suffering now also from an examination, a tumor. Isn't that right? That tumor's located on your breast, isn't it? Left breast. On the left side. I see the side of the table you're laying on from where they're looking. Don't be fearful. Just leave me now, just a moment. You're wanting to serve God in a different category than what you've served him in, too. You've promised God if you could get well that you would go on and seek deeper things of God, haven't you? You were praying near the side of a bed where a chair was. And said, Is that right? And a little green-looking thing hanging there on the side of the wall. Look, isn't that right? In the room. 
you believe me as this prophet? Will you accept what I tell you? Will you accept Jesus as your healer now? Raise up your hand and say, I now accept Jesus Christ as my healer. Go in peace, Jesus Christ, and make you whole. Go on your road rejoicing out. Get over your sickness. Just rejoice. Let us say praise be to God. Now, everyone reverent. <coughs> I want everyone to be aware that the things that I speak is not myself. That's not my voice. It's my voice, but not me using it. I go into another place and see what's materializing in front of me. The people move away. I, at this time, cannot tell you what was wrong with the person I just prayed for. I just seen a vision. I just have to speak it as it comes to me. And then the person witnesses after it leaves me that it's right or wrong. All right, bring the patient. And everybody real reverent. How do you do, sir? Perceive, of course, by your address that you're a minister. Would you come just a little closer, sir? Our Christ is wonderful, isn't he, brother? I see you're quite a believer. Yes, sir, I do. Say so you have a ministry of praying for the sick yourself. You pray for the sick, don't you? You write much literature and stuff on the same, don't you? Mm -hmm. You come from Canada, don't you? Mm -hmm. I try and, you're suffering with something wrong in your bowels. I say it's, I, it's cancer of the bowels is what it is. It's got ulcerated. It's beginning to start causing you much trouble. Isn't that true? My brother, let me have your hand. Merciful God, I hold now in mind the hand that pins the words that brings relief into this suffering. Satan is trying to destroy this warrior, but thou art here to heal him. O Almighty God, author of life and giver of every good gift, send thy blessings upon my brother as I speak in thy name. God, if thy servant has found favor in your sight, spare the life of my brother. And may from this night on to that clear up from him, and may he be a warrior on the fields up there that will cause literally thousands to find great help granted, Lord. And I now curse this demon called cancer in the name of Jesus Christ. May it come out of him, and may the man live. God bless you, my brother. Your gallant faith has saved you. You're going home and your ministry is going to increase and you're going to do more for the Lord than you've ever done. God bless you, my brother. Let us say praise be to God. Do you know that man, Brother Baxter? Well, let's say praise the Lord. I'd just like to say one thing about this man. He corresponded with me about coming to New York. I said, come. I said there was nothing I could promise. When Brother Branham said that the man had written literature, I was about ready to jump because his last letter to me, he sent me some of his literature on divine healing. Everything Brother Branham said about the man is true, and Brother Branham didn't know it. I only can say what God has showed me to and tells me to say. What only I can see him materializing in front of me, that I can do. Nothing else I cannot do. But the man is not going to die with the cancer. He's going to live. All right. Bring the pain. How do you do, sister? Would you just come a little closer? I just want you near so that I know when it starts speaking that your voice will be caught in the microphone, you see. I perceive that you are a Christian. Yes. Yeah. You've been very much wearied lately. You are... Something has been bothering you. I see when you're standing in the room, you're weary. Say, it's in your... It's, it's a tumor, isn't it? It's a tumor that's bothering you. And that tumor, I see you short. It's, not, it's in your mouth, isn't it? It's a tumor in your mouth. That is right. You, something happened then, didn't it? The life of the tumor left, sister. You go home to be well in the name of the Lord Jesus. Name. Let us say praise be to God who giveth us the victory through Jesus Christ our Lord. All right. Will the lady come, please? Oh, what a marvelous time. You just should feel now 
faith is just moving everywhere now, just moving in. How wonderful. Oh, if I only could get this one thing to the people just now, what would take place, it would be unknown to the glory that would be. Now, let's see, you're, excuse me, sister, it kind of gets a little beside myself. Come just a little closer. I, I, I don't believe, humanly speaking, that I ever seen you. We strangers? Yes, ma'am. Now, I'm just merely trying to help you. You are a Christian with the Holy Spirit. What a joy that was when you received it. I see you crying and waving your hand. Now, your trouble now is suffering. You're awfully nervous. That's been on you for some time. That's caused by your age, your time of life, menopause. Then I see that you have a female disorder that's bothering you, isn't it? Yes, ma'am. Upset at the stomach a lot. Isn't that true? Is that true what was said? You believe me as his prophet? Raise up your hand. Say, Jesus Christ, I now believe that you died for my healing. I accept my healing now. God bless you, sister. Go eat anything you want to. That drainage will stop. It was an abscess on the ovary, but you're going to be all right now. Go. God bless you. Let's say praise be to God. Everyone reverent, if you will, please, just reverent. Just a few moments. Don't move around. It interrupts me so bad here. If you just know how the pressure moved and how the friction between the people. See, you're in a line of, of supernatural. And just the least move, you can feel it just interfering, and that throws me out up here. Please be reverent. No wonder Jesus took a man. You say, Brother Branham, what about that? What Jesus took a man by the hand and led him outside the city to get away from the crowd. Isn't that right? It was written, look upon us, said Peter. John, all right, come, sir. Be real reverent, please. Just a moment. I know it's late, but think of the suffering. You'd wait at Mayo's Clinic day in and out. I was at the Mayo's Clinic two years ago, and the marvelous thing, what thrills my heart, at the Mayo Clinic two weeks ago, wrote for my little book that you're getting back there on the stand on divine healing to go in their, in their, la in their um, library for their students. Mayo's Clinic wrote for my book on divine healing, and they want to know how these miracles taken place. They can't deny about what is going on, but they want to study how it's done. Praise God. Here's the book that reveals it all. God's secret. All right, brother, if you believe with all your heart, your diabetes is gone from you, so you can go off the platform and be happy. All right, let's say praise be to God. All right, bring the lady. Sister, have faith. You were suffering with the same thing, wasn't you? You go off the platform, get well, too, in the name of the Lord. Amen. You believe with all your heart? Everyone reverent. What about way back there now? Go to believing. I believe the Lord is going to break through upon this audience in a few moments. Have faith in God. Don't doubt. Believe. What do you think about it sitting there? Oh, lady in a wheelchair, what do you think about it? Follow the instructions of the nurse. She knows of God. All right. What do you think, sir, laying on the wheelchair? Are you believing with all your heart? Have faith now. God can make, he's already done it. If your faith will just mount up. Have faith, don't doubt. All of you in the line, you're going to believe now? All right, bring the lady on. Standing in our midst just now, I look down and see Congressman Upshaw, who had been in England for 66 years, run for president of the United States. Known all over the nation, everywhere in England, 
And the man had been to a place, and the same thing has taken place right here. It's the same thing when he was wheeled into California in one of the meetings. I've seen the man being hurt and all he went through with. And there, sitting there, been in England for 66 years. I said, I see a young boy, he's hurt on a, by a hay frame near a haystack, told a kind of a doctor and so forth, and all that he had done. And so Brother Baxter comes home, he said, that, I seen where he was sitting, and the man there, he said, well, that man's a congressman. He's been like that for years, and I started to leave. When I started to leave, I've seen Mr. Upshaw without crutches or wheelchair or anything, going walking just as nimble as he could be. And there, that man, after being crippled for 66 years, I said, Thus saith the Lord. Here he is tonight, 85 years old, as nimble as any man, 30 in the building. Looked like if he'd have got healed, he got healed back there when his bones just had good calcium and stuff. But God in his power shows that he can do all things. He's a God that was a, here he is now waving his hands to you. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound. All right, lady, your heart trouble left you while you were standing there. Go on the road rejoicing and be happy. Come, lady. Believe with all your heart. Wouldn't you like to lose that old tumor? You go off the platform being happy. Gone from you. Let's say praise be to God. Someone out there pray now, accept Jesus. Accept him as your healer now. In your heart, say, I believe. Way back in the back. Up in there, please, everyone, be reverent. Be reverent, if you will. Don't doubt. Believe. Come, lady. I say. And it is this. I just want to talk to you in a moment. Yes, ma'am. You, you think you got everything wrong with you. Heart trouble? That heart trouble caused me indigestion. You have it worse when you lay down after eating, don't you? Your whole trouble's nervousness, isn't that right? You, it, it's a mental nervousness, too. I see, you, I see you holding your head like this and walking. You think sometimes you've lost your mind. Isn't that right? But Jesus Christ heals you now. Go on your own rejoicing. God bless you. Let's say praise be to God. Or it comes, sir. You believe with all your heart? Then you won't have heart trouble no more. You can go off the platform and be well. God bless you, my brother. Let's say praise be to God. I see a man sitting there pulling his knees and praying and crying. He's got something stuffed in his ear. You believe, sir? Of course, I see you've got something wrong with your ear. God's able to heal that ear, isn't he? You believe it? Stand up just a minute. Oh, it's not so much ear trouble. It's stomach trouble you're bothered with. Isn't that right? That's right. Raise your hand. That's right. Go home and eat what you want to. Jesus Christ makes you well. Amen. Now, you all can be happy. All right, come, sister. I see between you and I drips of blood. It looks real clear. Looks like it's got sugar or water in it. You're anemia, aren't you? Go off the platform and you receive a transfusion from Calvary by Jesus Christ. Let's say praise the Lord. All right, bring your patience. Will you believe, sister, with all your heart as you come? I see you're really sick, feeling the pressure of the enemy. You're suffering with cancer, aren't you? Come here a minute. Lay your handkerchief right here. You believe me as this prophet? Come here. Why don't you look at my hand? That's an ordinary man's hand, isn't it? I want you to put your hand here on mine. So you're touch me. Now look what happened. Did you swallow up those white things running across him? I'm going to take your hand off. I'll put my hand on. It's not there now, is it? I'll put your other hand on here. It isn't there now, is it? Well, you're just as much human in this hand as you are in that hand. Come here, Brother Baxter. Put your hand here on. It's not there now, is it? Come here, Billy Paul. It's not there now, is it? It's not there now. Now, put your hand on there. But it is now. Is that right? If that's true, hold his hand up so the audience will see. 
Now, if my hand turns real dark red and white like things running over it, is that right? In a little, it's like little pimples or bumps running across my hand. I watch how they come and go. There they come. There they move. Here they come again. You know what? That's a life, a cancer, malignant growth, which is in you multiplying cells, trying to take your life. I see you've done much praying about this too, haven't you? Seems like without any results. You've tried to believe, you've tried to accept it. Prayed for not long ago, and you thought you'd really go to be all right then, but it's proved that it wasn't so. Isn't that right? I'm not reading your mind, but I see the place where you were standing. But when you heard that I was seen, I believe you seen something, read something, that just seen you looking down. Then I heard you say, when I, Brother Branham, when I go to his meeting, he prays for me, I'm going to get well. Did you say that? Raise your hand if that's true. <laughs> then your faith has saved you, sister. Where's the vibrations at now? <laughs> They're gone. Now you can go and live. God bless you, mother. Let's say praise the Lord. No prayer. Your faith makes you whole. Is that right? You're happy, are you? That's right, and he healed you of heart trouble just saying. Now you can go off the platform happy because you don't have heart trouble no more. Let's say praise the Lord, everyone. What about you, sister? Do you believe me with all your heart? You believe I'd be God's prophet? You've been suffering with a nervous, haven't you? Stand up on your feet and be well in the name of the Lord Jesus and go out of God bless you, sister. You won't have those feelings no more now. Go and rejoice. Let's say praise the Lord. something different now, isn't it, brother? Amen. Amen. That's right. Amen. Your faith has saved you, my brother. All right. Come sit there. You want to get over that asthma? Raise up your hand and say, I accept you, Jesus, as my healer. God bless you. I'll lay hands on you according to the word, said these signs shall follow them and please. If they lay hands on the sick, they shall recover. In the name of the Lord Jesus, go and be made well. You want to be healed out there? You believe with all your heart? I see the little lady. You feel different about that nervousness now, don't you, sister? We're just healed. You feel different, quieter. Certainly you do. Now let everyone be reverent. You could only know, my Christian friend, what's taking place just now. I look out there, thinking how calling her the prayer line, another number just in a minute. What you got your hand up for, lady? You believe me? Laser red hat on there? You believe me as God's prophet? You believe God can reveal to me what is wrong with you there? Look at me just a minute. Yes. Just suffer with a tumor, aren't you? Isn't that right? I see him exact that tumor's on the left leg, isn't it? Isn't that right? But just wave your hand back and forth like that. Go home and receive your healing, sister. In the name of the Lord Jesus, he makes you all. Who wants to be healed? Who wants to believe? Uh, may our Heavenly Father speak to me just now. I see a man standing right here, right in this waist time, a heavy set man. He's holding him. Oh yes, he's suffering with a with a rupture. Let's see where I can see the man. He went out of my vision just then, standing right. Here sits a man sitting right here, kind of thin hair, big man. Or did you have a rupture, hurry you? That's right. God bless you, my brother. May the Lord Jesus make you ever with Oh, just a moment. 
I see a man standing before me now, coming this way, kind of thin fella, wearing a gray suit and a purple tie. There he sits right down there. Stand up just a minute, sir. Hmm? Well, the man there is a purple towel, kind of a thin looking man. Oh, yes, you're suffering with, with stomach trouble. Is that right? And say, you had something wrong with your bladder, too, don't you? Isn't there bladder trouble? Ulcerated bladder? Is that right? Raise up your hand. Receive your healing, my brother, in the name of the Lord Jesus. Just a moment. I'll be reverent, friends. I'm getting terribly weak. Just a moment. Believe now with all your heart. Now I see a man coming just away, coming right down through here. Just a moment. The man has something wrong with his... I see, no, it's, he's examining a doctor looking at him. He stops, he comes back this way. He isn't moving, yes. It's, it's his liver. He's got liver trouble. I see the man now. Here he, there sits the man sitting right there. Don't you have liver trouble, sir? Swollen liver, is that right? Raise up on your feet and receive your healing, my brother, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Is there anyone else in here who wants to be healed that would accept Jesus as their healer? Have faith in God. Don't doubt. Believe. Now, will you believe me? Have I told you the truth? Has Almighty God been here to vindicate that I've told the truth? You believe that so? Believe me as his prophet. Jesus Christ, the Son of God, has healed every one of you. He don't have to pick you. The whole thing's moving so now. I don't know where I can see one or not. What will you do and do as I ask you to do? Lay your hands over on one another like this. Put your hands on one another, please. Come here, Brother Richie, Brother Bob, or somebody right quick. Come here, give me a drink of water right quick. I'm sorry, this I'm, I'm getting so weak, I can't understand. Oh, God. Offer of life, give her mercy. Send thy blessings upon this people and bless them, Lord. Heal them, everyone, in the name of thy Son, Jesus. I curse every disease in here in the name of Jesus.